Gig Gab, the Working Musicians Podcast, episode 180 for Monday, no, Tuesday, September 4th, 2018. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the podcast that you know by four and about working musicians here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Las Gatas, California, it's Paul Kent. Delayed by a day with the uh, holiday here in the USA, Mr. Kent. How you doing? I'm doing just wonderfully, Dave. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing well. It's uh, lots of life changes lately. And uh, you know what, man? You roll with them and things start going pretty well. So that's, you know. that's the key, man. Yep, it really is. It really is. I, I read a study. I'm sure this will relate to music somehow. Just give me a minute. But uh, while I was eating my lunch, I read uh, sort of a synopsis of a study that said they they uh, had people. The, the point was to have people do difficult tasks, right? Things that, that they'd never done before, you know, like write a write a uh, proposal and pitch it or, uh, you know, pitch it to a a, a person. And then count backwards, you know, by 13 from whatever, you know, 500 or something like that. Right. These difficult things. And for the five minutes before they had to go and do these things and without knowing what it was they were going to do, they uh, had half the people just like read random stuff, whatever. And the other half of the people had to recount a uh, painful or, or a memory of failure, a very specific memory where they had failed in the past. And the people that recounted the the memory of failure did way better, both mm. uh, in terms of outcome, but also like physiologically and everything during these, these, you know, difficult challenges. And it's interesting, right? Cause you know, you, uh, and, and the reason was that these people who had recounted failure knew going in, it sort of level set them a little bit. Like, uh, you know what? Like this thing that I'm being asked to do is really not that difficult. You know? yeah. Whereas if you're well, coming. All, he- all human evolution revolution is based upon, you know, some, you know, a fire in the belly type of thing. And yeah. you know, motivation by fear or, f- or memory of failure totally makes sense. Well, but it, That's going to get what, your attention more. It wasn't even motivation. It was, it was, it's just level setting, right? Where these, these the baseline for these two groups of people was very different, right? One was coming from relaxed and you know not remembering any you know specific failures, whereas the other one was specific failure. It wasn't so much mm. that they were driven to succeed. It was, you know, what this thing that you're being that you're asking me to do isn't really all that hard compared to this other thing that I've got on my mind, <laughs> you know, and and that's how life is. And I, you know, that I mean, that's true uh, to relate it to music. Uh, it's certainly true when I'm sitting down to like learn some difficult groove or part or, you know, some thing to add to my my toolkit. It's like, you know, you get to the end of it. You're like, well, oh, really, it's just like everything else. You sit down, you tar- start slow, you work it out, you know, you practice. And hey, guess what? You know what? You can do this, too. It's really not that yep. hard. Yeah, I agree. So, I don't know. You had a you had a big uh, you had a, your your big end of summer gig this weekend the 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 big party in the park that you do every year is that right? I did, Dave. It was uh, absolutely amazing. It was, you know, since I'm part of a team of two, my friend Scott, who you know, and I, yep. you know, had taken this on ourselves, and uh, I get in the time leading up to it, very cautious about a lot of things. One, my event organizer hat is on, so I'm worried about all the things that could go wrong. Sure. I'm also continually uh, kind of thinking about how the house rockers are positioned in all this. And actually, that's a good place for us to start this discussion, because when I started this six years ago, I literally I said, this would be a cool thing to do. I want to give back to my community. I want to give back to my town. And we and I, you know, I I worked with a uh, an organization that was a community foundation in my town and we did it. And we put it on and it was in one format and it needed some tweaks. And then the second year it was in a little bit different format and it got a little bit better uh, over time. And then 
it became wrapped into when I did the full summer right. concert series oh. in my town. Oh, so this predated that. I didn't, I, I hadn't put that timeline together. Okay. That yeah. It existed, sense. you know, first and it, and it started out as a totally charitable endeavor. Then it got wrapped into this 10 week concert series, making it an 11 week concert series. Um, and it was one of the years I actually took compensation for it as a band member, not as an organizer, just as a band member. The bands, all the bands got paid. I happened to be in one of the bands. Sure. And then I, I am aware, keenly aware of the moving needle that we started out charitably. We moved to, you know, fair compensation. And now it's not connected to that 10 weeks. You know, this, the, this event still continues to exist and it was extremely successful this year. And um, I'm just wondering, like Scott tells me, I'm hypersensitive to this, that, that I care how other people perceive, oh, Paul's just doing this to give the house rockers a gig, which it started out not being that way. And then the thing has grown in success and a lot of perceptions. And Scott is like, you know, who really is thinking about it and cared? If you heard of another band doing this in their town, what would your reaction be? And I thought about it and I was like, well, good for them. That's a smart thing to do. Yeah, right. right. Exactly. <laughs> right. But, you know, I think, uh, you know, I lived in this town for a long time. I care about it. You know, I care about reputation. I care about what people think about the house rockers. And so, you know, I, I'm hypersensitive to these things, but you, you, my needle. You are. And, and, and yeah. I don't, I don't, I agree with Scott, but I, I not in a, a negative way. It's just, I mean, it's part of who you are. You, you do care about, you, you know, how you, how, what you do comes across to others and, and all of that. And it's, you know, I, it's for better and for worse. I'm sure. Yes. Right. You yes. know, it's just how it, it's just part of who you are. Yeah. 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 So, and I'm going to lead this into a very interesting story. So uh, the event was wildly successful this year in, in on every measure, the production, the, the event production. Um, I brought in someone I know to kind of do the moving parts, uh, you know, an event manager that I know, and she was incredible. And so I didn't have to worry about things like porta potties and light towers and, and, nice. uh, and garbage cans, and that type of stuff. So that was flawless. And the cleanup was flawless. Uh, the sound production was magnificent. So the team, you know, Bill comes in, along with someone Bill works with Mickey Hall. Mickey does front of house. She owns this beautiful arrays. And so really it's a, it's a sound system. That's the right size for a three to 5,000 person event in a big park. Sure. You know, it's not us trying to push a club system louder than it needs to be. It, it was, you know, it's really, and we would get compliments on the sound, you know, both the stage sound was fantastic and the audience sounds fantastic. Um, we have a guy who works with us who did lights and, you know, he spends a lot of time. We don't have a lot of venues where we can really do lights. We're not playing outdoors at night that often. Um, you know, the, a lot of the clubs that we come in, they have their own lights, their own light guy. So there was that little touch of detail that was really fantastic. Sebastian did a great job on lights, Bill did a great job on sound. We got to celebrate Bill's birthday with a special song we prepared for him, which was kind of a nice moment for everybody oh, nice. involved. Yeah, it was all, it was great. Um, uh, and the people had a really, really super time. So one of the things is the event organizer, I sweat someone getting hurt for some reason or someone behaving badly for some reason. Right. Sure. And you know, I'm on stage. There's not a lot I, I would be able to do in either of those cases. And so, yeah, Jamie was there as the event manager. Scott was there, but those are the things that I sweat, but the vibe of this was just wonderful. I mean, it, you know, people, some people got there really early, spread out lots of chairs and tables. The park was huge enough to accommodate whatever you wanted to do. The joy, the dance floor was full from downbeat till the end. I mean, and, and, people dancing with each other, people dancing with people they never knew before. You, It was one of those things where you really felt like you created something that had this love factor that was permeating. And the notes we got back afterwards were just glowingly happy. I mean, it was something I was really, really proud to be a part of. That's awesome. Proud to say that I helped put on. The band played great. You know, it was really, really cool. The one thing that I, that it was interesting was, so in addition there's to me always, there's kinda, always a one thing, isn't there? There's always one more thing, baby. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to ask you a question about how you deal with the fan community if they step over the line of propriety. So we've talked in, in our business life, we've talked about firing customers. If it's not mm. the right match, you fire a customer. You know, I one uh, I have some skills in life. One skill I don't have is putting on a happy face when I'm not happy about things. Um, and so if someone crosses a line for me, it's really hard for me to fake it. Yep. Yep. And I've seen uh, that. You have seen that. 
Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, we've had, well, we had people walk up on stage at, you know, at ah, our circuit night gigs, right? I mean, you know, things, yeah, things happen. There you go. Yeah, yeah. All right. You've seen sure. it. Anyway, so this is a question about a fan. Now, A, we're going to call them a fan. They come to see me play. Yes. Um, they are around. They're, they're uh, you know, in that way, you respect that you're grateful for their time. But I believe that there's a line where you don't have to do anything just for that exchange, you know, the, at, at its purest, it's an exchange of I will play music and if it makes you happy, great. And you will come back because it makes you happy. And that's the extent of our relationship, right? In musical communities, those things get a little bit muckier than that, right? The, you know, friendships form or at least um, acquaintances form. And Re- recognition uh, is, is the beginning of that. Yep. Yes. Yep. And so, you know, this is a big event. That we had. And um, I worked hard on it. I was, you know, a little wound up before the gig. Um, the band, the band was not wound up. The band was really looking forward to this. But the sound crew, it's a very long, intense day for the sound crew, right? Sure. So yeah. it's outdoors in a park. And um, um, we're uh, going through sound check. And a quote unquote fan comes up and asks if... Uh, well, more than ask, kind of presses an agenda to accomplish something that they wanted for themselves. I'm going to kind of leave it there because I'm going to, this may end up in you someone's know, lap. Yeah, They'll yeah. know who they are if they hear it, but I don't need to, you know, create any you more. You don't need drama to highlight that. specifics. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they had an agenda for something that they wanted. Um, and I'm not going to say whether it was a creative thing or a logistical thing or whatever, but they wanted something. Right. Yep. And uh, they started working their way through the band and their tact in de- getting this, um, you know, definitely creates a little tightness from some people who hear them, you know, they're, they're being kind of confronted with someone who has no problem pushing their agenda. And actually I got involved. They said, that's not going to happen. And, uh, they tried to plead their case. They said, we're busy doing what we need to do. That's not going to happen. Yep. Right? Yeah. We're getting ready um, because was, there's going to be 5,000 people here in a little yes, bit. Like, 5,000 other people besides other, you. <laughs> other people yeah. besides you. Yeah. 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 And, uh, uh, they walked away disgruntled and about 10 or 15 minutes later, that which they were pleading their case for seemed to be happening in some way. They obviously left me and went back to waited a few minutes and went back and plead their case. So um, this, this definitely put me in a, in a challenging place. I really wanted to focus on getting ready for the gig, but you know, that voice in my head saying, this is not cool. Do something about it is kind of going off and, um, you know, the guys kind of know me well enough to know, dude, you know, we got a show to do. Let's let's yeah, just yeah, get focus. our heads focused in the right way. Yeah. Anyway, so that said, um, I would be certain that when I shut this down or attempted to shut this down the first time, they walked away to their group and said, you know, Paul's being a jerk, um, which I'm OK with. And sure. the question is. What, I'm going to ask you, what would you do next time you're face to face with this person? Would you bring it up and say, not cool? Would you smile and say, we both know who each other are now and uh, this will affect the way that we acknowledge each other in the future? Would you uh, let it go? I mean, are, are the many doors you could walk through to kind of get some resolution to this? What would you do? Well, the the so I will answer what I think I would do. And, and then maybe we'll talk about whether that's even the right thing or not. But mm. um, but for the most part, what I would do is just ignore this person going forward. And if we encounter each other, fine, but it's going to be, you know, cordial, but cold mm. it, because I just don't have time for that kind of crap, to be perfectly mm. honest. Right. Y- you know, I'm it, with you. It, it, that's just what like, my gut says to do. We don't, both don't. know what like I like I'm taking your your second option and and sort of stretching it one step further down. I don't need to tell this person we both know who each other is now because we both know who each other is now. (laughs) Right. So I'm just we're just going to move on. And and it's but it's an eyes wide open thing. It's just I, I and I guess it comes from the place of this is not a relationship that I have uh decided i want to have right and and i'm i'm of course just speaking from personal experience i'm not necessarily putting words in your mouth or or anything uh for anyone listening but um you know it, 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 yes i i like to have fans i like it when people come uh but like you said this is a very uh defined relationship but it gets muddy when as soon as you throw that first thing 
into it that's more than I am here playing music for a group of people of which you are one. As soon as you do anything to single someone out, you know, saying, hey, good to see you again. Right. Recognition, as I said before, is where it starts. And that often can open a door that then leads to them feeling like they can say hello, which is fair. You you know, you've 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 sort of opened that door. They feel like they can come in. But the door may only lead to the entryway and the rest of the house is off limits. And that isn't necessarily clear to everyone in this scenario. And sometimes you have to make it clear. And I've seen other people, you know, do this. Uh, I mean, I, Dave Grohl. And of course, you know, he's so good at 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 just being Dave Grohl and, and being the, mayor of, rock and the roll. mayor of rock and roll. That's right. But I, I saw him speaking once. It was before or after a movie. He was doing a Q&A for a Foo Fighters movie or something. And somebody asked a question, you know, and so he took the question. That was part of the deal. And then the person had a follow up question and a third follow up. And it was now like this person and Dave were just having a personal conversation. Mm. And in that person's mind, I think that was the agenda. And Dave just stopped him and said, yeah, you know what? We should do this later because right now I got this other thing going on here. I don't know if you noticed, but there's everybody else in the room, you, you know, and he was he was, you know, tongue in cheek about it and all smiles. And of course, had the rest of the room on his side because he was the one with the microphone. And but that's actually my question. Exactly right there is like is we talk about essential skills for musicians to have. Yeah. And, and I'm thinking that, like I said, I don't have that skill. Right. Right. <clears throat> you know, once, once I feel disrespected or once I feel my line has been crossed, chemically, I can feel my body doing stuff. Right. Yep. I can feel clenching happening, all this type of stuff. But, you know, you, you know, like I always say, you gave me that advice that you go work the room on your breaks and you, you thank people for coming. And, and that is a really good thing. That one is easy. That one is, you know, there's a totally there's just a sh handshake. Thanks for coming. And that's the extent of the exchange. If someone tries to draw you in further than that, I definitely, you know, have to go into thinking mode. How do I want to go? Yeah. Grohl seems to have that naturally. And maybe that's well, why he's such a good leader. If not naturally, he has certainly developed it over the years. Right. Be because it seems like he is that guy that wants to thank everybody. And and, and like I, I would be I would be shocked to find out that he hates people. Right. Like it's possible. Right. He's really good. It could be a really good actor, but I think he genuinely likes people, but there's too many people that know who he is. Right. So mm. he has had to learn how to, you know, politely, but clearly draw that line. And, uh, you know, my guess is that he, like the rest of us, learns the same way. And that is trial and error. And yeah. who knows, maybe he stumbled onto the right way to do it earlier than, uh, you know, than, than he could have. And perhaps that's part of the success that they've had and, and, and all that. But um, my but sense he, is that that's kind of what's endearing about him is that's actually who he is. is who that he, is. Can, yeah. he can get off those quips and make you and, you know, take care of business and make you still feel loved. Even if you're on the short end of that business. Right. Right. And you know, and you're, you're on the short end, but yes. you know, it's, it's important to remember. Uh, I'll, I'll pull in a, another favorite drummer, uh, Neil Peart, who uh, is terrible with fans and, and really anyone that, that knows him because of his work in the music business. Right. He just, he, he doesn't get it. It doesn't sit well with him, no matter how upset you, it makes you, it, it, there's no way that what you go through is even close to what this poor guy goes through. Right. I mean, he just gets freaked out by it. And, and, but he has said a very interesting thing several times in his writings, which is, you know, that it's important to remember that the root of the word fan is, or that, you know, fan is short for fanatic. Fanatic. Yep. And, and it is important that, you know, and perhaps that's an easy way to remember, oh, yeah, I have to draw this line because you don't unless you know the person, which you probably don't, then you also don't know just how far they see this going. And that can be really dangerous, uh, you know, not perhaps physically dangerous, certainly, but but also just dangerous from a uh, a relationship standpoint where you've got this person that thinks they that you and they are best friends. And that's a that's a weird thing to have yeah. to deal with when 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 there's not a common understanding of the relationship. Uh, so and, let me push this a little so further, because, you, you know, there's another door. Right. Sure. So you ever see Billy Joel live? I have. Yeah. Do you know how Billy Joel 
he used to close all his concerts. I think he doesn't do this every time now, but do you know how he closes his concerts? Uh, yeah, you know, enlighten me, please. Or remind me if it's something I've seen. As he's finishing the last chord of the last song, don't take any crap. Use a different word. Right. Don't take any crap from anybody. That's right. how he ends his show. That is right? how he ends his show. I do remember that. Yeah. There is a certain ethos that, um, you know, in, if you want to, if you want to emote true vibe of rock and roll music is that, you know, there's a, there's a demanded honesty to this and you don't take any crap from anybody. And so, right. you know, th- this, uh, one individual, I should refine this a little bit. So the, the compassionate side of me says, sometimes people just don't know what they do. Right. You know, right. even, even if I label someone as, as acting entitled, it doesn't dawn on them that it's, you know, some people are, are more inherently evil than that and they know it and they don't care. And those people, right. right. But the compassionate right. side of me is like, okay, come on, I'm yeah, in a no, business. No one, no one chooses to, to act in a way that they see as irrational. Right. 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 Very true. So as I'm kind of listening to you talk about this situation, like, you know, my mind is kind of going on all over. Like the, the compassion side of me is like, you know, have a, have a kind conversation that says, Hey, I'm going to tell you why I wasn't cool with that. I know this person and there'll be one of two doors that that person will go through is like, okay, I get it. Or, or, you know, if in the entitled part of the brain chemistry is in, is going to say, what was the big deal? Why don't you just do it? And, you know, it'd be a dead end. So those are, those are two things that could happen there. In reality, this person is not so much a fan of mine as a fan. And you probably know this, you know, and anyone listening probably has this in their musical community, groups of people that just go out to you know listen to music. And I happen to play in some places that are their watering holes. And that's the essence. It's not so much Fair. that they have some allegiance to me. It's more that they have allegiance to their social life. Right. Yeah, yeah, and so there's really sure. nothing to lose there. Right. There's really, you know, I could care less, you know, there's not, you know, I guess those are warm bodies buying drinks and some of the venues that I play that help contribute to my success and those types of things. But at what cost? Right. You know, to be miserable, you know, I, I there, uh, you know, it's like we've had that conversation. Could you pay for somebody who you had deep philosophical, political, personal, social differences? You know, again, we're saying I know who you are. You know who I am. Yeah. If there was somebody there looking at you and you knew that they were an abject racist or something like that. Right. You knew that they like they they had done demonstrable things. Sure. Yeah. That you disagreed with the, who they were. Uh, you know, could you tune that out and play for those people? Um, I have done that. So I guess the answer is yes. You have, and you're, you're like, I don't get to choose who's in the audience or you have, and you're like, like I, I can put this aside for now. That's my job. Or, you know, like, no, what, what it's, goes it's, your mind when I don't that? get to choose who's in the audience is, is, is how is the scenario that at least the one that comes to mind for this, you know, like I've done some theater shows where I, you know, I take them, take my seat at the kit and I look out and I see, Oh, Holy crap. That person's here. Okay. <laughs> right. You know, like, and I think in my head, wow, that person is so wildly racist, you know, and I might even turn to a bandmate and say, Hey, there's a person here that's wildly racist, you know, or whatever. <laughs> but, but it like it, I don't get to then say, okay, like I'm out of here it, because I'm not the way I, I the way I've, and I haven't spent a lot of time thinking about it now that you're asking, you know, there's a lot of different ways I could look at it. But the way that I I have looked at it is I am not working with that person. They are simply in a place where I am working with others, you know, mm. and yes, some percentage of my income for you know my, my pittance of an income for these theater shows, because listen, folks, theater doesn't pay. Right. Um, but uh, I mean, it pays some, but, you know, not very much. Uh, it's definitely coming from, you know, that person, because that's how that's how this works. And if I were doing something where repeatedly I was encountering, a you know, a, a large percentage of the crowd that was, you know, like white supremacists or something like that, uh, where they weren't necessarily targeting me because I also happen to be, you know, white. Uh, but, you know, if they like they were just people that did things that I disagreed with. And I yes, if, in case it's unclear, I, I do happen to disagree with with the agenda of white supremacists. Uh, <laughs> it, it, well, I mean, you laugh, you know, some people, for clarifying that. some people don't. Some people are white supremacists. And, you know, I, I don't understand that. It's, in fact, it doesn't make any sense to me. But um, if you know, if every show I showed up and, and there's, you know, this this significant 
percentage of the people that are there that are white supremacists, I might say, well, yeah, you know, this isn't the gig for me, man. <laughs> like I do this because I enjoy it. This is kind of weirding me out, but I've never been in that scenario. It's always just like, oh, there's a person that I, wow, I, I won't seek them out after the show to say hello, nor sure. do I think they will seek me out. Right. You know, and, and, and that kind of thing certainly has happened. And it's just like, yeah, whatevs. I mean, um, I isolated, you know, individual kind of things. But I, I have always let go. Should I, I don't know. I, you know, you know, there's a great story. I, I think I told you I'm a big Ryan, not, not Brian, but Ryan Adams. There's fan. nothing wrong with Brian Adams, but nothing wrong with Brian. I mean, I like Ryan, Ryan about. Adams, but right. yeah, but this story is a Ryan Adams fan. So Ryan, you know, is this kind of the, a lot of people call him the father of alt country, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, he's this fantastic songwriter. He plays, he does sometimes tours or just him solo. Last couple of times have been him with a, with a band, the band changes seem, seemingly tour to tour. Um, but he's, I find him fantastic. And he is, most people who are fans of him know that he has a merc mercurial aspect to his personality. He's, he's, he's uh, warm and, and fuzzy often and really um, pointed often. And um, he has a pretty rabid fan base and um, his shows have a very interesting tone to his, his communication with his audience that seemed to be a real truth, you know, as to who he is and who, uh, what he's feeling at that particular moment. And there's a fairly well documented story about him playing a show and, and people will, yell out summer of 69 or something like that, you know, what a Brian Adams song. And, and he handles this in a variety of different ways. And actually, you know, he has a, a, a live CD from, from Carnegie hall where he handles it one way, but there's a famous story about someone yelling something out. And I believe he's at the Ryman in Nashville when, the, when this, or Grand Ole Opry. And, um, and he actually stops his show and he asks for, um, ushers to do something and nothing really happens. So this is a person just yelling out a request, you know, of something or you sure. know, saying something arcane. And he actually stops the show, goes down to the audience, hands the person money for their ticket and says, you need to leave. <laughs> and, you know, just kind of makes a point of it. And then the person leaves, the ushers take over the person away and he goes and finishes show. Wow. You know, and, and the reverberations <laughs> from that are like a, good for him B, come on man that's over the line your performer deal with it and, yep. you know yeah. so it's kind of this conversation that you and i are having yeah. in a nutshell right so and that's why i think it's interesting because there is a certain ethos where if you don't put up with it you get points from people you know for for being that guy who's like there's right and there's wrong and my art is is limited to that that is the the essence of our exchange of our relationship. We can be pleasant to each other, but understand the currency of our, of our relationship is I play. If you like it, you come, if you don't, you don't come. And that's the, that's the extent of the currency of our relationship. Right. And then there's other people who are Mr. Show business who are constantly ingratiating because you can never have too many fans or too many friends. And that's another path. And you know, now I'm not, I'm not advocating one or the other. I'm actually right. sharing with you. I'm kind of confused as to which door I I, I know which my inclinations are I questioning, you know, sometimes my inclinations serve me well, sometimes they don't serve me that well. Yeah. And so this is, this is interesting. I've, I've definitely played with some people that very much hold that line of, okay, look, I'm, I'm here doing my art. And uh, if you enjoy it, I'm glad that you're here. And, and thank you for, you know, paying to, to see me uh, do my art. But if you come up and talk to me afterwards, do not expect me to be nice to you, right? I mean, I've definitely played with people like that. And it's the first time I encountered it, it was weird. It was like, holy crap, man. Mm. Like These people, they ju we just spent two hours in a relatively small space with, with that person, among others. And they came up to say something and you shut them down right away. And, and uh, I was like, yeah, well, that, you know, like... This is not part of what you pay for when you come see me. Uh, like there's a line here and, mm -hmm. you know, and it was like, whoa, OK. But I, again, it, it surprised me. It's not how I react. If, if I don't want to talk to someone, I will um, n navigate my way out of the conversation as quickly as I can. Uh, and sometimes that may come across as being aloof, but I will not 
outwardly tell someone, no, we are not going to talk right now, you know, and uh, and I, I think and, it comes down. I don't know. You, you have to do you have to do you. Right. So that that's it, David. That's that's it. I mean, who are you? I I, I think. When you're an original artist, there's a slight difference to the sense of it. Maybe, maybe not. Sure. That could be argued. You're, yeah, I'm with you're, you. you're, yeah, you're, as long as you're consistent, you know, Pert has been notoriously consistent, right? Right. Totally. Yeah. He's, he's not going to be different for someone. You know, he is who he is. And in that truth, it's probably why you're buying into their art, right? Because that's right. kind of what Part informs of it, their art. For sure. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Yep, you know, I, I know that we, in our conversations we've had, it is, it is a little different in the cover band world because, you know, at the end of the day, you get that bar gig based on how many people you put in there. And right. so, you know, that skill to smile and say, Hey, I can't really talk right now, but so glad you're, you're here. Uh, even if you're not glad they're there. Um, I guess that is, that is the decision we all get to make. Are you that guy? Because at the end of the day, you go home, they go home. If you filled the bar, you know, everybody, you know, gets to have the exchange. If you're the person who's like, nope, even if it's covered material, this is my art and it's precious to me. And I'm not going to do it in any environment where I don't feel great about it. And so that's my truth. And I'll, I'll walk down that path. And I guess that's the, we all get to make that call, right? Totally. Um, yeah. And I, I'm saying, as we talk here, my inclination is to make the call to, have a humane conversation. Say, I want to let you know why that bummed me out so much. And usually those kind of conversations, if I'm good at doing that, they will know where I stand. We can even agree to disagree. I can let them know I felt disrespected by it and why. Um, and if what comes out of their mouth is I don't care, I'm, I'm the fan that you get to do what I want to do. Then, then that really defines things. And, and it's, it, there's some closure to it in the moment. You know, I'm not having that, that amount of information exchange. Like it, what you're asking in your self-entitled way is not cool because of this. I don't have time to do that before a show. That's, you know, that's not what I'm there to do, but to follow up someone who lives in my community, they do support live music does it deserve one more conversation to say, I want to let you know why that was not cool for me. Yeah. I guess that's, that's what, it, that's kind of what it feels so, like. Okay. Like, so you, really what you're asking me to answer or, or you're, what you're asking, you might be asking rhetorically, but I'm going to answer anyway, because it's what we do here on this, uh, on this here gig gab is, is it worth seeking this person out to, so that you can feel like you've had some closure mm. and, I am not convinced that that is going to work to your benefit. Interesting. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. Right. I, if it, and just so everyone that's listening knows, I, I know, I, I know exactly what you've heard about this scenario, right? Like sometimes you and I will have a pre-show conversation that goes into great detail and then we'll sort of gloss over it like we have here so that, you know, no one other than Paul and I are highlighted in, in a particular story. Right. That did not happen today. So I have no f knowledge other than what you're telling me here. And, uh, but I still feel like that, like I, 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 I'm not convinced that would go the right direction. It might. Well, I'll right? tell you it why might it connects. Totally. Yeah. It might. Here's why it connects. You know, yep. we're talking about what is your truth and yep. I'm not Grohl. I don't have that kind of self-effacing, you know, let someone down, even if they're, behaving badly gently we all have a laugh at it and you know that's how i control a room i'm i'm not that you're not that that's guy. not in my bag right. what my what is in my bag is you know to be a compassionate decent dude and um offer a humane interaction one-on-one -on -one that says i want to let you know where i'm coming from you know th that is that is kind of how i handle many things in life yep question about whether you should have a different skill set when you're that guy on stage versus what you should have when you're not that guy on stage is an interesting question. I tend to come back to what makes any of this work for any of us is truth. Who are you and what do you stand for? And what I stand for is humane interaction. You know, that that would be pretty high up on my list of the way humans should treat each other. So even though I'm, I was mad at the time and gruff at the time, I don't take that back. You know, that's, that's the reaction I will give every time that type of thing happens. Sure. hundred percent of the time 
I'm not going to be fake about it. I'm, you know, that, that, and I don't mind if everybody who listens to the show, everybody who comes to see me play in whatever form it is, if they know, you know, Paul's not cool with that. Cross the line. And, and yeah. this is the version you, of Paul you're going to get. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's a truth. And I would expect that everybody, you know, I don't, I won't dress someone down or, you know, you know, make a point of humiliating them or anything like that, but you will get coolness from me. Yeah. The question is, 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 you know, is it on you or is it on me or is it the right thing at all to do to, like you said, closure is an interesting thing. It's not practical to close every, every well, one of these types and, of things. And so my question uh, really comes from a different angle on this. I, I, I'm, I'm in firm agreement with everything you just said, right? I mean, you got to be you and, uh, and, and all of that. But I guess my, the reason I am saying, uh, maybe don't, <laughs> don't waste your time on this man is because I'm not convinced based on what I know that the outcome of the, in fact, I am more convinced that the outcome of any future conversation about this particular issue will most likely serve to dig the hole even deeper. Right. It like, well, it's one of two things you've all, well, you've already, it, it is one of two things, but you, you're telling me that you've already had this conversation with this person and they decided to go deeper, right? You made it clear. Here's where I am. Here's the line. And they were totally fine with, mm. nope, I have my agenda. This yeah. is, you know, my needs are more important than what I'm being explained are the needs of the many. The needs of the few are me and I am going to do my thing. And so I like, it just doesn't sound to me again, based on what I know here, like that this is going to like that this is worth your time. I, I and I could be obviously totally wrong. I've I've been wrong before, you know. Well, you know. There's, here's here's the angle that I I say. Um, I'm not expecting to change your mind on this, so that's not the point of this. Sure. And again, you know, no, uh, there are no truly selfless deeds. You know, I would rather be known as somebody who will have a a meaningful, honest conversation rather than someone who just emits emotion. Sure. I don't know. I'm, I, yeah. I'm, Dave, I'm talking around this in about 20 different ways. Right? But, you know, yeah. Yeah. I don't I, like, you know, don't be a jerk is like rule number one yep. in either direction. And, you know, here's what you can expect from me if you are a jerk. And again, is it a jerk or is it, you know, on awareness or is it, you know, whatever. So it's no, it's an interesting thing. Cause we all will, you know, you, you're performing, and entertaining people. And, and the point, this is the hardest part about all this. The point is to make a real connection with your audience, right? I mean, how many times on this show, you know, we've, this is episode 180, right? I, I, I guarantee that in certainly the number of episodes where we have said something that says you should be interacting yeah. and connecting with your audience is in the triple digits, right? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's part of what we do. So now, you know, here we are saying, okay, well, um, there is this downside to, to making this connection, right? You open that door. People feel like they can talk to you. If people feel like they can talk to you, they can ask you for things and they can almost convince themselves that they should expect you to deliver on those things. Right. And that's, that's the dangerous part. And it's really, it's hard to get to, uh, to, you know, to, to, to deal with this. And, and, you know, we mentioned Grohl and Peart, right? I mean, the two guys that deal with it in totally different ways. One of them just absolutely avoids people. And if you were to interact with him, I, I've heard stories where he just, you know, like he'll go off on you because he's, mm. because he's like afraid and uncomfortable and, and he doesn't feel good about those interactions, but it's how he reacts. You know, a girl on the other hand has a, you know, much different public way of handling it. I don't know. I haven't heard him talk about it behind the scenes or after the fact. So I don't know what, you know, how he feels, but, um, but it is something to, to figure out because it's not, it's not always, you don't always get to, you don't get to control what other people think. At some level you do, right? You can set the, the tone when you're on stage and the whole, you know, getting that whole group dynamic thing down and, and focusing people on positive things while the music's happening. Like that, that is a skill. Uh, and, and frankly, it's one that, 
my esteemed co-host here, Mr. Paul Kent, is a master <laughs> of. Really, truly. <laughs> like you you've really worked that out, man, and you can you can hold a crowd in the palm of your hands and move them in a lot of different directions. And it's a great skill to have and and it's a skill that's that's worthy uh, of of spending some time to develop. But you can't control how people are all the time. And yeah. and that's that's the tough part. So yeah, you do need to deal with it. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's I know you care deeply about what people think of you. And and that's a big part of why you're as successful doing this as you are. But it comes with a cost. And I feel like this might be that cost. So there you go. I appreciate all that, Dave. That's yeah, man. cool. Yeah. Thank you. If I want to hear about what you folks think, though, so feedback at giggabpodcast.com, please let us know. This is a this is one of those interesting things that we all have to deal with. And I, I'm really curious to hear what what you folks think or find us on Twitter. Gig Gab Podcast there, too. You got anything else before we uh, before we move on, my my friend? No, I'm exhausted. This was, <laughs> this yeah, was emotional. This, yeah, this is a little bit of uh, group therapy here. So yeah, join the group, sure. folks. Yeah, we would we would <laughs> love to uh, we would love to hear from you because uh, this it gets interesting. I don't know. It's it's tough. I I, I constantly in those moments, and you know, just like ah, oh, I could have handled that better. Like uh, whatever. But you know what you do. You just keep performing, man. Always. Always be. On stage or off, I guess, right? I guess. It's how it is. It's exhausting. And and fun, usually. So, we'll see you next week. Late.